Midruasahina, rock star version. We're going to be going through the dress, and if you're lucky, I might do the accessories too. So we've got the figurine reference, and we've also got picture references from here, here, and here. Now, one of the first things to think about when deciding how you're going to make this dress is where you want that bow at the waistline. Because whether you want it central or off to the side is going to affect how you use the use a pattern or how you make it up. Now, from this pic from this figurine, because her navel is here, we can assume that the bow is central. This is a side-on picture, so it's hard to tell, but it looks relatively central. Again, here the shading might indicate the navel and therefore a central bow. However, this one, her front seems to be going that way, and her bow seems to be going that way, which might indicate off to the side. But for the sake of ease, we're just going to make it a central bow. Patterns and materials. Here we've got another simplicity costume pattern, 4015. And as you can see from this one, it's got that same V-neck that we're going to use here. We're not going to make it, be making it quite as deep as the, as the figurine. But if you feel that you have the confidence to wear that much cleavage on show, then feel free. This costume pattern is also designed to be worn with a belt and it, it features in most of the outfits so the bow is going to be easy to put in. However, the thing about this pattern is that it's designed to fl the skirt is designed to flow from the waist. But as you can see from the figurine, the waistline is here but the skirt is flowing from the hips. So what we're going to need to do is extend the bodice. This pattern comes with a bodice front and a bodice back both of which have darts in them, but we're going to ignore those because we don't want the lines going right up the front of the top. So all we've done is we've got some paper and we've extended down by however many inches you are from waist to hip. Um, and also what you've got to remember is that when you do the sides, you've got to flare it out a bit because you go from waist to hip and it just goes, it just flares out a bit. So you've got to try and keep that within the pattern. And also this is the front and as you can see what we've done is we've given it more of a sloped bottom which will help us lead into this, this V shape at the front. The material we've chosen to work with is a cotton jersey. This is basically what most t-shirts are made out of. It's got a decent amount of give in it so hopefully that will help us get this form fitted look without having to resort to either really stretchy fabrics or a really, really fitted pattern. A few more things to take into consideration when you're going to be making this costume is the fact that it's a two-tiered skirt. Now, that gives you room to play where you can either make both tiers out of your main material or, like I'm going to do, I'm making the bottom tier out of a different one. And this is a pink satin. And unless you have experience with satin, I wouldn't recommend doing this as a, as a beginner. So, either use an easier fabric or get somebody to help you. Okay, something else to consider is that this pattern is based on the fact that the skirt will flare from the waist and end at the mid-thigh area. However, since we've extended the bodice down towards the hip area, then the skirt would ne wouldn't necessarily reach mid-thigh, it would actually come down probably to the knee, possibly even below the knee, which for Mikuru is probably a little too modest. You can be as modest as, as you like with the skirt length, but given this pattern piece, you could probably cut it in half straight away and then that would give you enough material to form the top layer. If you're, going to, if you're going to be making the top and bottom layer out of the same material as basically out of the same material as each other then you could use this as the bottom layer and then half the width as the top layer to give that leveled tiered effect. However, since we're going to since in this example, we're going to be using a different fabric on the bottom, namely the satin. I'm probably just going to cut this bit in half and give me two instant strips. Now when you come to make this skirt, you're welcome to make it as ruffled as you like. Just beware that the more ruffled you want it, the more pieces you're going to have to get and the more you're going to have to gather, which it, it will require patience, so bear that in mind. Now, what we've decided to do is to ruffle the bottom layer more than the top. 
and that's just because of how we've interpreted the figure. So here we have our cotton jersey and our pattern piece. Now we cut out a full piece of the cotton jersey on the fold. So what, you, what we've essentially done is cut out two of the pattern pieces. We then cut it in half because the top layer is going to be about half the length of the bottom tier. And so now what I have effectively got is four lengths worth of top skirt, whereas the pattern only indicates here in three. So already you're going to get a little bit more ruffle. Again with the satin we've also cut on the fold and done that three times to the full length of the rectangle. Th this is also something to bear in mind with skirts is that you can always take them up rather than bring them down. So if they're too long and you would like them to be shorter you can always take them up. But if you cut it too short you have to start again or add innumerable amounts of lace or have a seam going all the way around which is rather unsightly. Now because we extended the bodice we took out the darts because what we didn't want to have would be stitching lines going right up from the hip to, to, where, to the bust area. So we're just going to move right on to attaching the front and back panels at side seams and the shoulder seams. The next thing we're going to move on to is the arms. Now, on this pattern, it does have puff sleeves, but they're very small and ever so slightly round. And what we want for Mikuru is something a bit bigger and a slightly different shape. So the arm that I've cut out is actually from another simplicity pattern, 2789. What we're going to need to do with this is run a gathering stitch around here and along here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, let's get this pattern piece off. We'll mark on where these dots are, not pinning the two sleeves together because they are going to be separate sleeves. I'll just do one for now. So what you do is you take your sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can just do something similar with needle and thread. So you set it to your widest stitch, which is normally about 4.0. do is close, close to the edge. You run your first line of stitching. Now you have to be very careful when you do this and make sure that it is actually parallel to, well, that's a parallel, running in conjunction to the outer line of the material. What you don't want is it to go up and down and all over the place because when you actually come to gathering you'll find it's much, much harder because of that. So there we have our first line. Now what you're going to do is run a second line of stitching, line up the edge of the foot. Then what you do is you pull the threads through so they're all on the same side. Now what this will do is as you're gathering it will stop you from just pulling the thread out completely at which point you would then have to begin the gather again. Which can get very frustrating. Right, once they're pulled through, take the two closest threads, like that, and just gently pull. And simply ease the gathering. Good. 
gather as much as you like and then test it with the armhole.